Thank you for joining us for the last talk of the day. Uh, I'll be presenting a never-ending story, uh, which is the non-metastatic constraint resistance process cancer. Mainly, we'll be discussing a case which has been under our care for the past 15 years and hopefully still counting. I think it has become a ritual uh, that we display a case photo whenever we're discussing a cartridge resistant bronze cancer. Uh, because in the 1940s, Charles Huggins uh, won the Nobel Prize by proving that uh, prostate cancer can, the progression can be halted or delayed uh, by eliminating, eliminating male sex hormones uh, in our patient. Uh, so through castration, uh, of course, there will be the effect of castration. And one of which is the creation of a man-made clinical state, which is not present before that. Uh, following castration, uh, either through surgical or medical means, uh, the average time before they develop castrate resistance is about 19 months. And the definition is a castrate serum testosterone, which is usually, usually defined as a level less than 15 nanogram or 1.7 nanogram per liter, with either a biochemical criteria, which is a rising PSA uh, of more than two, and a radiological criteria uh, according to the RISIS classification. A non-metastatic castrate resistance is the absence of metastasis or compressional imaging as discussed by Mr. Lim in his previous talk. And this is usually defined as a bone scan or CT imaging. Uh, one third of these will eventually develop a bone lesion within two years and the median time of uh, the development of metastasis is about 30 months. A PSMA PET may detect patients who are at high risk groups uh, which is a PSA doubling time of less than 10 months, a release score of 8 or more. Uh, if we have to have a PSA done, PSMA PET done for these patients, about half of them will actually show some positive patients. But whether this is clinically important or not, uh, at the moment we are unsure. Survival after castrate resistance uh, can be fairly long. The median overall survival is about 45 months. Uh, with proper treatment, I think we can significantly prolong survival in these groups. As shown in this patient, when he was diagnosed at the age of 49 years old, that was in 2006. Uh, at that point, it was a T2A disease uh, with an initial PSA of 72.4 and a Gleason score of 7. A conventional imaging was done, uh, which did not show any metastasis. However, unfortunate for him, at that point, he refused to receive treatment and was started on androgen deprivation monotherapy by a private urologist. Uh, after three years, due to financial constraints, uh, he eventually ended up in our care. At the time of presentation to our site, about three years after diagnosis, uh, he was already in castrate resistance. Uh, PSA was 4.76 and rising with a very short doubling time, around 6.9 months. At that point, he has received androgen deprivation for the two months, his serum testosterone was castrated, and the bone scan was negative. So due to the lack of options at the point, uh, we started maximal androgen blockade for the patient, and somehow the PSA did respond, coming down to Nadi of 1.62. Uh, but due to some adverse events uh, from the drug, he had to be stopped on the Casodex, uh, which led to a significant rise in the PSA after the draw of the drug. The PSA doubling time, point, doubling time at this point was about 3.4 months, and we repeated another conventional imaging, which was again negative for metastasis. So we had an MDT discussion from B, uh, during which we decided for him to undergo radical radiotherapy. So he received radiotherapy at that point, uh, 71 grays were delivered in 38 fractions, which led to a significant drop in the PSA uh, down to 0 0.5. So with this, Good outcome, we thought that perhaps we should continue in on adjuvant androgen deprivation for about three years in view of high risk disease. Unfortunately, uh, after a period of 37 months, his PSA started to go up again and he fulfilled the Phoenix criteria for uh, recurrence. Uh, the serum testosterone was castrated, and again, uh, conventional imaging was active for metastasis. At this point, he was asymptomatic with a very good functional status and did not show any radiotherapy adverse effect. So we thought that he was a good candidate for trial enrollment and we enrolled him into a clinical trial and was started on the investigation product. Uh, this was an AR agent. 
So when started on this agent, it complained of multiple adverse reactions, uh, giddiness, lower back pain, blurring of vision. So we were quite sure that it was the active drug uh, because with those reduction, actually all these adverse reactions uh, started to um, resolve. But the PSA continued to rise and he had to be unblinded, uh, which to our surprise, because he had the side effect, we were very surprised that he was on the possible arm and subsequently was switched to the active treatment. Uh, at this point, when he's on happy drug, there was no adverse reaction. In fact, he feels more energetic after taking it, and the PSA started to come down. And at this time, it is a sustained reduction. So he took up yoga, subsequently, he developed some lower back pain, and is currently awaiting MRI assessment. So this is the PSA timeline for the patient starting from the day he was diagnosed with prostate cancer in 2006 and up to the last visit with us in May 2021. So he has received multiple treatment over the course of uh, his care, uh, starting with androgen monotherapy, which managed to control the PSA for about 32 months, maximum androgen blockade, which probably up for around 14 months before he had to stop because of adverse effect, and unfortunately did not show the androgen withdrawal syndrome that we related. After which, he received radical radiotherapy, which controlled the PSA for 36 months before being enrolled into the trial in the placebo arm, showing progression of PSA. And with the active drug now, it's a sustained control for, at this point, up to 35 months. So for 15 years since he was diagnosed, 12 of which in the castrate resistant state, he has remained asymptomatic and has remained very good quality of life. So I think the point of interest that I'd like to discuss for this patient is that castrate resistance is a man-made clinical state and most of the time it develops around 19 months from ADD initiation, following which uh, they develop metastasis after about 35 months and the survival is about 45 months without treatment. So back in 2006, when it was diagnosed, treatment option was very limited. It wasn't until Spartan and Frosto was published in about 2015 that the treatment landscape completely changed. And we finally are able to offer some treatment for this group of patients. So the point of discussion will be interesting because his diagnosis preceded all these uh, advancements. So first of all, is ADT monotherapy was indicated, the efficacy of maximum androgen blockade uh, at the point of the straight resistance, usefulness of prosthetic radiation in the castrate resistant setting, and the benefit of early AR agent initiation, to which it showed a very good response. So the first question, I mean, at the point of diagnosis, um, he was in high risk group with a very high PSA, a very short PSA dumping time. Treatment options were very limited to open retrofibrin prostatectomy or radical radiotherapy. And radiotherapy at the point carries a very significant morbidity due to the lack of image guidance or intensity motivation. So yeah, we weren't surprised that he refused treatment at that point, but was ADT monotherapy indicated? According to the EAU guidelines, if they are at high risk, actually it can be considered. So I guess it is not wrong to start these patients on ADT monotherapy if they were to refuse uh, curative treatment. So for him, he responded for 32 months, longer than what you would have expected. But he did show a rapid progression after that. Uh, maximum androgen blockade uh, was widely studied prior to 2030. Um, in the PT ECTCG trial in 2000, it showed a moderate, modest five-year survival benefit of around 1.8%. And in 2005, Lawrence Scott published uh, his paper showing that there's an 8% mortality reduction at five years if you were to use a non-steroidal anti inversion What about the salvage therapy after ADT failure in the setting of castrate resistant disease? We are very limited to phase two trial, uh, one of which is a PCTCG trial, uh, during which the subgroup analysis of non-metastatic disease showed that there is a very limited survival benefit in about a third of patients, but at the cost of increased rates of side effects. Uh, we were hoping that he would demonstrate some anti-retrosial withdrawal syndrome 
due to the group response to maximum hydrogen blockade. Um, in the SWOC trial, the show that they do have a modest progression free survival benefit of around three months, and 19% showed a prolonged progression free survival after withdrawal. And you can predict this response if they have a non metastatic disease, a PSA only progression, and a long maximum androgen blockade duration of more than 12 months. Even though our patient has all three of these, unfortunately, he did not show a very strong anti androgen withdrawal security. Uh, because following withdrawal, there's a rapid progression. So the third point was that was prosthetic radiation indicated in the setting of a non metastatic carcerate resistance? Again, we're very limited in the form of evidence that we have, uh, mostly retrospective studies suggesting potential benefits. Um, overall, these papers show that there's a, a recurrent free survival of around 30, 39%, with a time to recurrence of around 23.5 months. In our patient, he did show something similar before relapsing. Uh, at the year of 2019. So I think the most important point I'd like to carry over is, uh, was, would it have been useful if we were to start an AR inhibitor earlier? So one of the ways uh, to decide is that if we can identify predictors for progression, meaning uh, is the patient at high risk of progression. So Smith published that if the baseline PSA was more than 10 and the PSA downing time was less than six months, uh, this independently predicts metastasis free survival and overall survival. Uh, whereas the Spartan, Prosper, and Aramis trials, all trials involving a non metastatic carcerate resistance, use a PSA cutoff of 10 months to be considered at high risk of progression. So, in our patient, he did have a high PSA initially with a very short PSA downing time. So if we were to have started the AR agent earlier, meaning at the first point when he was diagnosed with non metastatic castrate resistance, uh, would he have a similar outcome? Meaning we have a spike and drop uh, with each subsequent treatment that we offer? Or would he have a very sustained uh, rise followed by a very sustained response to the drug? Um, it's very difficult for us to decide before this, but with the updated results from all three trials, I think at the moment we have a fairly good idea. So I'd like to share uh, the updated overall survival result from the PROSPER study, uh, which was presented at the ESCO 2020. Uh, we showed that there is a uh, statistically significant reduction in the risk of death if you will start endorithomite early uh, for patients with non metastatic castrate resistance. And it also delays the time to first use of subsequent anti neoplastic therapy if we would have used it early. Many patients could have avoided chemotherapy, radiotherapy, or other forms of treatment. Uh, the worry is always if we were to start this drug early, would it have uh, side effects from the drug? So, in this updated study, uh, there was no decline in the uh, hazard related quality of life. Uh, in fact, there's a longer time to deterioration of their FACTI score of around three months with treatment versus no treatment. And the quality of life, there's no meaningful change uh, and there's no worse pain compared to no treatment. So overall, I think uh, if you were to start early, so far, all the evidence points towards a benefit in controlling the prostate cancer without a significant increase or deterioration of the patient's quality of life. So I think one of the ways uh, to help you decide if if you were the patient, which would your preference be? Would you have gone through the stepwise approach, such as what a patient went through uh, before being offered the AR agent? Or would you have preferred an early initiation of the AR agent at the time of diagnosis? avoiding all the other treatment modalities that were delivered to our patient. Or perhaps you would just go for less supportive care because at the moment, the overall survival even without treatment is fairly low. So I think in summary, non-metastatic castrate resistance is a very critical period within the clinical spectrum of prostate cancer. There's a possibility of a very long survival with usually minimal or no symptoms. 
So it's very important for us when treating these patients is that we have to balance the life prolonging treatment that we operate and preservation of the quality of life. So far, the evidence points to work benefit in offering these agents early uh, without actually harming their overall quality of life. So we, our patient has been in us for 15 years and counting, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to update this condition in our subsequent view. Uh, so thank you for your attention. I'll be happy to take any questions you have during the Q&A session.